Now see, see, nobody could have predicted that. Where it went, it went, went oh, see, it's over there. I never knew why the boyfriend sitting off to the left was cool with that. Because emotional dad. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. Hey, welcome back to our stupid directions. It's Corbin. <laughs> it never gets old. I'm Rick. Uh, hey, where'd the, where'd the little gnome come from? Oh, it was a gift from Summer to Steph. Nice. Yeah. Is that a real plant hat? A hat made of real plant? I don't think so. Oh, can we smoke that hat? Sure. Sweet. Uh, we are Bollywood bootlickers, so we just have to do it. Yep. If there's drugs, it's Bollywood. <laughs> <coughs> Anyways, the great thing about Bollywood is not only are there drugs, but everyone's doing it with their family. Oh, sounds like he's doing a line. <laughs> no, he is potty training now. Is he? Yeah. Oh, nice. Potty training. His, did, did he just suddenly decide he wanted to, no. or? Okay. No. Maybe I mean, he's. We actually did that. He was a weirdo. We've put him on the potty many times, yeah. and he knows to go. Right. But we're now putting him in underwear. Got it. Take him like every 20 to 30 minutes to the yes. potty. Yes. So he gets the idea that. Yeah. That's where you got to go. So. Yeah. And yeah, it's going well. He's doing well so far. He's had a few accidents, but. Well, it should help that dad's doing that at the same time he is. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure it's very inspiring for him to know that together you're both learning how to use the toilet. I guess. Yeah. Today we got a video. This is called the. Uh, you, we saw her. She did the. You remember? The, oh, I loved her. Yeah, she with the returning the stolen goods. Right? Yes. This is the Great Indian Brain Drain. This is about, um, um, ta uh, I guess, s skill or talent from India going elsewhere. Got it. Um, and it's one of those things. So well, it's you like, know, you know why it's going elsewhere, particularly to America. Uh, money. Do you know what the? Mm, you know what the average IQ of Americans is? Seven. You're not far off. <laughs> <laughs> you are emotional damage. That's why our IQ is low. I mean, it's, it's, it doesn't take a much of a rocket scientist to recognize that Americans are stupid, but we can prove it with the level of IQ in this country. Well, Not kidding. Uh, half our country did elect a racist lad. Hence, yeah. <laughs> I saw a study on the average IQ in each of the states. It's terrifying, and it doesn't surprise me because I consistently will talk about how we're just surrounded with doorknobs. Uh, it, it's, it's terrifying how low the IQ is of every pretty much average American. I agree. Yeah. Two weeks back, an Indian-born techie replaced yep. Jack yep. Dorsey sure as CEO of Twitter. Around the same time, an Indian-born economist was promoted as the first oh. deputy managing director of the IMF. Did not know that. They've both added their names to a growing list of Indians serving at the very top of prominent... Make an Indian edit button on Twitter. Sure. Many Indians celebrated their achievements. Many others debated them. How does the success... She reminds me of Christian Amin Do these individuals build brand India? Or do they represent lost Indian talent? Let me show you some figures. Since 2016, 6 lakh Indians have given up their citizenship. Since 2014, 23,000 millionaires have left India. In fact, India ranks number one when it comes to the migration of the rich and the educated. Hmm. It accounts for wow. a cosmic 65% wow. of the global share, way ahead of China and the Philippines. For the second most populous country in the world, exporting talent, something that it has in abundance, should not really be such a big deal. After all, Vasudev Kutumbukam, the world is one family, has been an ancient tenet of Indian philosophy. And yet we must ask, is this limiting the innovative capacity of India? Is it hurting our economic growth? Hello and welcome to Gravitas Plus, I'm Palki Sharma Upadhyay. In the 1970s, long before globalization became common currency, brain drain used to be the buzzword in India. Hmm. What is brain drain? The loss of human capital. An expression that refers to the flight of skilled labor from developing countries to the developed world. Mm. Why does this happen? Mostly due to conflict, political instability, lack of opportunity or health concerns. The converse is called brain gain, which simply means large-scale immigration of skilled labor. For decades, the West has benefited from brain gain. During the 1970s, many young Indians graduated from elite and subsidized public institutions only to find that jobs in India were not really financially attractive. So they started leaving the country to make the most of their degrees and skills to get better rewards for their effort and talent. 
and unlike short-term contract workers to Gulf nations, most of these Indians never returned. They ended up as prominent bankers, entrepreneurs, innovators and scholars abroad. This was at a time when India needed such professionals the most. It was still a poor post-colonial country and the exodus of its best and brightest is said to have diminished India's growth prospects. The economic liberalization of 1991 changed things. Higher education institutions cropped up, as did several multinational companies. Foreign investments began flowing in, as did long departed Indians. Some even say that the economic bonanza of the 1990s was largely due to this return of the Indian diaspora. Indians who had left India came back along with capital, information, ideas and networks and all of this powered the economic boom. But the trend lasted only for a few years. The figures tell you the story. In 1997, million Indians were living and working outside India. As of 2017, the figure has risen to 17 million. What does this tell you? That India's problem of brain drain still persists. According to one estimate, more than half of the first rankers in class 10th and 12th board exams between 1996 and 2015 migrated abroad. They're still employed overseas mostly in the United States, the best and the brightest of Indian minds living in and working for another country. This is Brain Drain 2.0. What explains this? An easy answer could be money. They say brains go where the money is. Others say brains go where brains are. Brains go where they're valued. And that is not mm. to say that money does not play a role. It does. Look at wages in the context of purchasing power parity. Mm -hmm. Compare the average wage in America versus that in India. In academics, you earn six times in America compared to what you earn in India. In the IT sector, more than double. In management, more than three times. So clearly, money is a factor. Then you have education, quality of life, social security, gender equality, health benefits, a whole lot of things. If you talk about education, India has come a long way. It has ensured that almost every child goes to primary school and that's no mean feat, but higher education is still a challenge. We have some stellar institutions like the IITs and the IIMs, but none of them appear in the list of top global universities. A lot of good colleges in India also have skyrocketing cutoffs. So students leave to study abroad to land better paying jobs. And these are expensive degrees, but they attract hundreds of thousands of Indian students. Then we have social security and quality of life, better roads, hospitals, schools. Take Canada, for instance. In 2016, the number of Huge Indians influx. who became permanent residents yeah. of Canada was 39,000. In 2019, that figure jumped Universal to 80,000. That's an increase of more than 105%. Next comes gender equality, yes. a neglected dimension of brain drain. In 2021, the gender gap in India widened to 62.5%. There aren't enough women in technical and leadership roles, and this stems from gender disparities in education, labor force participation, and income levels. The entire system, you could say. And this makes a lot of highly skilled women shift abroad with no intention to return. A lot of young people also go because they want to experience life outside India. They want to see the world. Many of them get used to what they see and experience and don't return. Many others return because they don't feel at home. Or just the bother of tracking changing visa rules is too much for them. Oh, for a lot of people, the tag of being an NRI is a badge of honor. Call it a colonial hangover, call it the gift of Bollywood and their portrayal of NRIs. <laughs> for many Indians, the idea of living abroad is glamorous. So there is no one an reason interesting for take, leaving take and not away, returning true. or for leaving and returning. I can see that. Yeah, right? And we may disagree with many of these reasons for leaving India, but that will not change the fact that people are leaving. And at what cost? We end up contributing more to our host country than to our home country. A lot of skilled Indian immigrants got subsidized education. They went to schools and colleges with more than 90% subsidy. Who benefits from this subsidy? Other countries, not India. According to the Associated Chambers of Commerce and Industry, Indian students studying abroad cost India as much as $17 billion a year in lost revenues. Mm. When they leave India, they're in the most productive phase of their lives by the time they return. That is, assuming that they do return, they're often a spent force with ideas and skills that are no longer required. Now, this apparently leads to reduced economic growth, limited innovative capacities of the nation, and lack of skilled okay, manpower. you sold me. How do we fix it? I have some more figures to show you. According to the U.S. National Center for Biotechnology Information, NCBI, India is the world's biggest exporter of doctors. And this is a disturbing statistic. 
There is one Indian doctor in the U.S. for every 1,325 Americans. Wow. There is one Indian doctor in yep. India for more than 2,400 Indians. India is losing its doctors, engineers and entrepreneurs to other countries. It's losing much of its skilled human capital to other countries. There is an urgent need to understand what is driving this trend and reverse it. Why is it that rich families with roaring businesses want to acquire investor green cards? Why does an IT employee pray night and day to earn that H-1B visa? Why does an Indian student want to go abroad directly after school? Why do Indian-born innovators disassociate themselves from their birthplace? These are uncomfortable yet important questions. Questions that we need to address as a country. Questions that we need to answer on all levels. If you want to end the great Indian brain drain, if you want to stop non-residential Indians from becoming non-returning Indians. Yeah, she's a good reporter. She's, she's so good. She, you know, or her and or her team take a package and, and kind of um, put all the pieces together in, in terms of visual, Absolutely. visual that, representation and obviously her research and what she prepared. That could have been an NBC or ABC yeah. nightly news segment. She's a, she's a really good 60 minute herself. segment. That was fantastic. And it's such an interesting um, dilemma they have because obviously um, America doesn't have that um, issue um, no. in terms of export, like having our talent. And I, th I think some of that has to do with being obviously an economic powerhouse and obviously a capitalistic powerhouse sure. where obviously we celebrate and promote our rich people, our one percent people, and and want them to stay here, and that's that's our own problem, and <laughs> kind of ignore the middle class and the un, uh, lower class. Yeah. But obviously, the the uh, the opportunities you have opportunity here is, is absolutely because astronomically higher of the amount of money we have here. Right? Yeah. Well, even even that though, even that the, the 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 opportunities, there are so many more roadblocks to opportunity in India than there are in America in terms of social strata, yeah. economic restraints, gender differentiation, yeah. uh, political problems that are some of the contributing factors. And for yeah. sure, I mean, when you look at comparatively, consistently the value of the dollar to the rupee, it's the same thing with the dollar to the peso, and it's why so many people from Mexico come here, yep. because there's so much more opportunity, and they can send this money that they make here back home, and they get more bang for their buck, d definitively. Something she didn't get into that I, I know is a contributing factor from stupid babies who've been talking to me about life for the past three years. And because of the fact that they've tracked with Indrani and I and her journey to come here, which has solely been because of our relationship, wanting to be together, and her connectivity in her heart, mind, and soul with all things in American culture, particularly dance, music, and movies. One thing that wasn't brought up in the social security aspect was the, the, the freedoms that are felt here versus in India as a democracy versus many stupid babies of messaging has messaged me and said, we call ourselves a democracy, but we don't function as a democracy. Mm. And many of them leave because they're extraordinarily disheartened and unhopeful that anything's gonna change, that in fact it's gonna get worse. And one of the contributing factors to coming here isn't just the dollars and all those other things she listed, but the sense of, the, the uh, and whether you agree with that or not, it might piss you off that I'm even mentioning that. I'm just telling you what I've been told. That's not my opinion. That's what I've been told. And I wonder how much of that is also part of the social security yeah. part that she mentioned. Okay. This was this was huge. And um, my bro my brother in law, who is a he's a doctor. I I can't tell you what kind of doctor he looks. He looks at scans. It's <laughs> body, whole body scans. I don't I don't I don't know what the fuck he does. Oh okay. But he gets paid a shit ton of money. <laughs> but I asked him, I was like, I'm guessing there's a, you work with a bunch of Indians. Indian people. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, you know how in certain workforces in America that there's underrepresented minorities. Right. Indians are not one of them. Right. And doctors. Right, right, right. <laughs> he says they are the majority. Yeah. Um, and he says, okay, one of his best friends' name is Amr. I, I got to meet with him and talk with him about his family's love for for Shavu Khan yeah. <laughs> when they came over for Thanksgiving. and <laughs> An interesting thing she brought up, and she kind of just went by it in passing, but I think it's a real... Statistically, I wonder what the contribution is, but a huge contributor to the idea that America's the place to go has been embedded into the hearts and minds of Indians through Bollywood. Yeah, it's very popular. Yeah, like what she said about the... How many films that have been popular and made popular yeah. are either taking place in America or about coming to America and 
the influence that cinema has on the minds of people, especially young people who want to be like the stars that they see on screen, I think that's a huge, huge yeah, factor could, among all those other yeah, ones. Yeah, definitely could be. A yeah, definitely bring. But I want interesting questions. The thing I was, you know, that's the problem. So we've, we've recognized the sickness. It's not an easy answer. How do, how do you yeah, solve it's it? It's not an easy answer. There's probably a ten thousand different things that go into it that that you have to that you have to compete with. Not only money and and but you obviously have to change certain social structures and. I think one of the main things that and, I, and it's not saying this to toot our own horn in any way shape or form really not but the thought comes to my mind of i i think just celebrating the greatness of the things because like we've been introduced to stuff that we had no idea about yeah and i've i've received again messages and i know you have from from <clears throat> indians who said thank you so much for what you do because whether they live in india or they don't it's reconnected them and made them proud of their country again yeah. And I think that in and of itself, to see the global community appreciate India for India could cause a lot of people to say, you know what, I'm, I am glad that I'm here. But that's an oversimplification of those other complex. Yeah. There's a lot of things that need to be addressed. Yeah, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, let us know what you thought about the video and any other informational videos Great video. that we can react to from her or others. Let us know down below. Just